Hello and welcome to Warwick iCast. If you were watching last week's programme, you'll know that we were at Warwick HRI exploring the potential of rapeseed oil as a source for a sustainable energy of the future. Well, we're back again this week to assess an alternative solution. Straw. It's a question that's exercising the minds of scientists all over the world. How to convert crops into biofuels. But in our rush to find greener alternatives to fossil fuels, we could be storing up new problems for ourselves. Moral, social and economic ones. What's more, some say we're actually causing the environment more harm than good. Fuel is becoming in short supply in the world. Fossil fuels are running out, and fossil fuels are causing problems with carbon dioxide buildup, greenhouse gases. So as a consequence, we're searching for alternative sources of fuel that are both ethical and are sustainable. The recent search for biofuels from sugar crops, such as sugarcane, or from starch crops like maize or wheat, have been successful and are in massive use in the US but there are ethical questions surrounding them. There are problems, for instance, that the search for these new bioenergy crops has actually pushed up the price of the food. And paradoxically, this big push for alternative fuels, in some ways, is actually bad for the environment. Well, yes, I believe that's right. We now have a situation where fuel crops are being grown and causing the destruction of tropical rainforests. So, could straw provide the answer? Wheat grain is already being used as a source of biofuel. What they're doing at HRI is trying to make use of wheat crop wastage instead. That leaves the grain for eating, reducing the risk of scarcity and starvation and, of course, inflated food prices. We're taking wheat straw and we're breaking down wheat straw biologically using bacteria and using fungi. And these organisms partially break down wheat straw to useful chemicals, which we can then convert for the chemical industry, for fine chemicals, and also convert for the fuel industry, for bioethanol. How exciting is this? Is straw the future? Well, straw is part of the future. This is never going to be a complete solution to the world's energy supplies. There is now going to be a whole series of options to provide fuel. The critical thing about straw is that we can convert it to a liquid fuel and liquid fuel is essential for as a transport fuel. Working alongside Dr Burton on the project is Dr Daniel Eastwood. He's a microbiologist with a special interest in all types of fungus. HRI has one of the largest collection of mycologists in the country, that's people who study fungi. And we cover a whole range of interests, including plant pathology, but um, also we look at uh, the mushroom growing industry. So that's the production of mushrooms for farming and agriculture. And a, part, a large part of that is turning straw into mushrooms, which is um, our main interest that we've been studying here for well over three decades. The mushroom industry um, is, takes what we would consider a low value product straw and converts that into a relatively high value product which is mushrooms and what the mushroom is doing is actually using the straw as food to make mushrooms and that principle can be applied to many other fungi not just the fungi which make mushrooms and those fungi break down straw in a slightly different way and when they break it down into more simple components, perhaps sugars, those can then be taken and made into fuel. So what exactly are you trying to do and how are you going about it? Well our aim is really to use the fungi to break down the straws uh, as efficiently as possible and that means optimising the process so that the little input is necessary to get the maximum product back. And how are you doing that? Well, we have to understand how the fungi actually break down the straw. Um, we know that they grow quite happily on the straw and at the end it's broken down. But how that is actually done is not clearly understood and we need to 
get a better understanding and optimizing the way that the fungus crawls on the straw so that we can get the most out of it. That would involve maximizing the growth of the fungus but in a way that it's breaking down the straw without converting it into its own biomass or respiring all the straw for CO2. So we want to keep as much carbon back for biofuels without losing it to the way that the fungus grows. And understanding that is quite a complex process. The project is still at an early stage, but the signs are encouraging. These are the bioconverters where we set the conditions for fungi and bacteria to actually break down the wheat straw. And if we open up the bioconverters, you can see the heat generated by this fermentation process. Oh. Just look at this. And this is what Ooh. happens to the straw. Partially bioconverted from straw to a composted straw from which we can now extract energy and materials. As well as heat, it also generates quite a smell. Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> That's one way of describing it. But yes, but what we can do is collect the chemicals from this smell and actually they are part of the bioconversion. Now these are small scale converters. Presumably, eventually, you'd hope that there'd be mass uh, converting going on. Well, very much so, very much so. These bioconverters are based on the mushroom industry. This is the experimental unit. But in the mushroom industry, you have straw bioconverters for hundreds or even thousands of tonnes per week. These converters are, of course, fairly basic, but HRI has begun to experiment with more sophisticated techniques. Well, now we've moved into the fermenter suite of the bioconversion unit, and you can see here we have a 300-litre fermenter, uh, an experimental fermenter, which is designed for bioconversion for, in our case, for the liquid which we're going to take from the bioconversion we saw previously, and then convert that liquid to materials that are useful for industry or biofuels. While Dr Burton and his team at HRI focus on converting straw into biofuel, their colleagues at WMG have begun to explore the potential applications. At WMG we've got a lot of industrial partners who are really excited about this kind of research that we're doing. They're looking for ways of being more environmentally friendly and green. It gives them a, 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 an advantage in the marketplace, particularly when it comes to consumer products. So alternatives to fossil fuels and fossil plastics is really exciting for them. Straw has all the chemistry that we require, but it avoids the food versus non-food arguments that are causing a few issues at the moment. So in that respect, it's a great source of potential fuels. Once they've started fermenting the, the straw down and breaking it down into useful products, we're going to start using fine chemicals for the chemical industry, we're going to start making plastics for the plastics industry, and then we're going to make fuel specifically for uh, cars and even aeroplanes. Realistically, how long do you think it'll be before we're putting ethanol derived from straw into our cars? Well, with the expertise we've got here and our industrial partners, we believe we could achieve this within, say, five to ten years. If Dr Kerwin's right and straw does become an important source of transport fuel, it will have one very big advantage over fossil fuels. We certainly needn't worry about it running out. The advantage of straw is there's so much of it. The UK alone produces 20 million tonnes of straw every year. So that equates to a third of a tonne for every person living in the UK. So to use straw for as a fuel, to use straw as a source of materials, is environmentally friendly. It's sustainable and um, requires no extra inputs than for the production of the wheat grain itself. Well, that's about it for this week. If you've got a comment on this or indeed any other item you've seen on Warrior Kaikast, then please do drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Until next week, goodbye.